I know that it's not easy to take lectures at your age, but all of you probably knew that it would be hard. Looking at this, all past memories start to float in mind. Gathering like this reminds me of school days with classmates, so I wanted to tell a few words to the students who came here today. I think that if you came here to take my lectures, you shouldn't unnecessarily waste your time. I don't want you to think that you can take lectures and right after that have a glass of alcohol. I want you to realize that you have to study hard and after that take a rest. Have some kind of mental recovery. Also, we have a very beautiful garden here, so you also can take a look at flowers. So if we can think like this from the very beginning of our course and prepare ourselves for such a method of education process, we will be able to create good memories. Actually, every time I give lectures, I have some kind of struggles in my mind. If you ask me what kind of struggles they are, for example, if I don't judge modern medicine, modern medicine also will not judge me. Or if I don't attack opponent, he also will not attack me, which is the rule of nature. I also think how to formulate my words in a right way before I actually say it out loud, in order not to hurt the feelings of doctors and scientists of modern medicine. In such cases, I have such thoughts in my mind. What if people in modern medicine also don't tell a lot? In order not to hurt someone's feelings, in that cases when their opinions are different. So how do you think? How much I actually can tell you? How do you think? It's actually hard to define. So I would like to tell you such thing. Depending on from what point we look at some things, we can see them completely differently. So in this case, what is the differences between the view of Western medicine on human body and on the treatment methods? And the view on human body based on the natural laws and principles. What will happen if we try to look at our body from the new, different angle from where we look at it right now? Those people who listen to the audio and watch the lectures and also video materials will be able to acquire the new methods of looking at our body and also the new methods of diagnosis which will assure them that there is no another method of diagnosis and treatment. Therefore, the study allows you to look at human body from the new different point of view. And this is the reason why we should approach the study with the open heart and mind. So it will be better if you take it positively. Also, it will be better if all of you who came here today to listen to my lectures erase everything you have studied before. If you do this, the studying process will proceed faster. What I mean, I have been studying and teaching these principles for almost 27 years. It's quite a long period. So, as students listening to my lectures, you will be able to get answers on your questions based on the knowledge accumulated for 27 years. But as I told earlier, many people who had studied another study and came here after that would assess my words according to that criteria, and if my words will not match with their beliefs, they will not accept them, and if they match, they will accept them. So, as a result, if I tell them 10 words, only 2-3 of them can be delivered and accepted. Controversially, it can be harmful, so sometimes I think, people who study some kind of principles on their own, what kind of thoughts do they have? And based on what thoughts they look at human body and apply such treatment methods. I think that understanding of this study will proceed faster and easier if you try to approach this study with open heart and mind, as I told you earlier. Usually, during the lectures, I use two terminologies. The first one is Simchon physiology, and the second one is Simchon sahel blood cupping therapy, so method when we use cups. 
For extracting blood, we use Chan cell therapy. If we are talking about prescriptions and researches, I use the terminology Chan physiology. The reason I introduced this terminology was because, as I told you, everything looks different depending on from what angle we look at it. And everything I'm trying to explain to you is a vision from my angle. There is a meaning of this study. That is why I call the study Shimchon physiology. So it will be great if you accept the study. Which I teach you here, deep in the mountains, like something new, not related to the modern medicine. At the beginning point of your education, you will be asking yourselves, what are the differences between this study and the current treatment methods, and why these differences have to be? This is the key point. When I started to do some researches related to my study here in the mountains, actually I knew that there were a lot of people like me. Therefore, at the beginning I had no such idea that my work would be developed into such massive study. But when I treated some patients, a lot of other patients started to come here to get my help. As a result, I was assured that these diseases were not some kind of serious diseases. I could prevent it very easily. But from my point of view, these diseases were not treated well from the very beginning. Therefore, it was impossible to get a full recovery. As a result, a person got one disease after another and spent all his money to cure it. And in case if even these steps were ineffective, he came to me asking for help. So, at the starting point, I had no any special knowledge about treatment methods which were used outside. So many patients who tried to cure their diseases using Western medicine, home remedy, Eastern medicine, told me a lot about it. Therefore, it can be hard to believe, but my view on the treatment methods used outside I got from my patients, mass media, but not from the books or somewhere else. I can say that every study proceeds in such a way. If you look at this, there is no such thing in the world which is not based on exact formula. Also, I cannot say that all aspects of the modern medicine are wrong. There are some parts that are right and some parts that are wrong. But there is no such standard using which we could say that something is right or wrong. Based on this knowledge, if we look at the mathematical formula, we can find out if this answer is right or wrong by solving the problem inversely. I've been doing researches for a long time and I can say that there is also a formula for the logic of life. If we try to solve the reason of any disease using this formula, we can realize that almost all diseases are curable and only a little number of them are not. If we try to solve this problem, we can find out that if it's not 100%, at least 97-98% of diseases could be cured, except for the diseases which were appeared as a result of chemical intoxication. Heavy metals, in these cases, it will be impossible to treat such diseases. But from my point of view, we can find the cause and treatment method for 98% of all diseases, which occur due to the natural reasons. So it's very important to think about what is the basis of these thoughts, and whether there were clinical testings on patients before we reached to this point. The important thing here is if we don't create standards, we won't be able to deduct the right diagnosis. If you ask me why, I will tell you that the right diagnosis is the base of the right treatment. Therefore, the first lecture can be hard and boring, but you will be able to understand it better and easier. If you keep in mind the differences between the view of the modern medicine and my study on human body, so it's very important to know what is my view on human body. And from now on, I would like to explain you the principle starting from this problem.
If we look at the Simchan physiology, probably we heard such expression. Our body is linked in food chain. Also, that our kidney and liver are the last organs of excretion. You probably also heard about it. This is extremely important information. Also, such words that all cells in our body are independent microorganisms. They are independent microorganisms with independent thoughts who are fed separately. Maintain life separately, but they live as one group. It's really important information, which is needed to be understood. Anywhere you look, there is such information that all microorganisms on our planet exist as a result of their constant searches how to survive in the new environment and how to adapt to them. But people just cannot imagine how organisms that live today on the Earth maintain their lives and got adapted to the new environment. But actually, they are exist on the Earth because they can find a way to adapt to the new environment. And this is the starting point from which we should look at our body. And another thing we should keep in mind is that adaptive evolution is evolution related to the adaptation to the environment. What does it mean adaptive evolution is evolution based on the adaptation to the new environment? If Koreans are living in Korea now, that means that they could find a way to adapt to the Korean environment in the past, right? The same as with Americans. People who are living in the places with cold climate are adapted to it. Those who live in a warm climate are adapted to the warm climate. If organism is living on the land, it got used to live there. If it lives in the water, it got used to live in the water. The same with the environment with low or high level of nitrogen gas. This ability of organisms to adapt and survive in the different environments is called adaptive evolution. The reason why I explain you this terminology now is that I quite often use it during my lectures. Now there is such possibility that it might be not really easy to understand this terminology. That is why I briefly wanted to explain them to you before we go further. As I mentioned earlier when we were talking about blood vessels, there are arteries which were connected to the arterioles and at the very end there were capillaries. All of these different blood vessels are connected with each other and create one line, right? I'm sure that there are no any mistakes in my words. The thickest blood vessels are arteries. The second thickest blood vessels are arterioles and the thinnest one are capillaries. If we compare the structure of blood vessels with something else, the best things to compare with will be probably a flower pot. At the bottom of the flower pot is a heart, the trunk is arteries, the branches are arterioles, and the small branches are capillaries. But there is one big secret, which is hidden in there. If you ask me what secret it is, we have only one heart, right? Usually people think that in all parts of our body, the amount of blood circulation is the same, but actually the amount and the speed of circulating blood is different. So what defines this amount and speed of blood circulation? Depending on the blockage of blood vessels at 20%, 50%, 70%, the blood circulation speed is different. Do you see the connection? So are these differences only in the blood flow speed, or is there something else? The problem is that it's not the end. The slower the speed of the blood flow, the lower oxygen provision is. The lower oxygen provision, the harder for body cells which are located near blocked blood vessels to perform digestion process. In this case, a lot of incomplete combustion substances are created. What is this? This is a uric acid. So if the uric acid is excreted, Usually, if blood is circulating in normal way, the weak acid is excreted by kidney, the middle acid is excreted by liver. And if blood can circulate well, what phenomenon can occur? After a while, the acidity level will increase, right? Is that all? I am trying to tell that increasing of acidity level is not the end. There are different ingredients inside our blood. Such ingredients in the state of low acidity level just circulate inside the blood vessels along with the blood. But if the acidity level is high, they can be involved in some kind of chemical reaction. What is a chemical reaction? To create tofu, we need soybeans and soy milk. After that, we need to add coagulator to activate the process of coagulation, right? This is a chemical reaction, and this is a key point. The main components of soybeans are fat and protein, and coagulator is acid. The kidneys excrete the uric acid, weak acid. The livers are filtering the middle acid, which can be considered as tannin acid. But what will happen? 
If the functions of kidney and liver decrease and the capillaries in blood vessels are partly blocked, so what is next? If the blood is clear, the only phenomenon that will happen is blood vessels blockage. But if the blood is contaminated, what will happen with the acidity level? It will be extremely high. In that place it can be weak, middle or strong acidity. But there are different ingredients in our blood. Instead of weak acidity, there are coagulated fat and protein accumulated in our blood. The substance which is created from the coagulated fat and protein and blocks the blood vessels. In Shimchan physiology, the substance is called ohyol, coagulated blood. Ohyol can block blood vessels like wastes, block tubes and sewer system. So I define the substance which interrupts the normal blood circulation as ohyol. And the whole process of melting, prescribing and resolving is generally called ohyol too. In order to melt the substance, we need to know how to classify the principles of chemical reaction. If we classify it, we will be able to know that there are weak, middle and strong acid exist. In the state of weak acidity, lipoproteins are coagulated. These lipoproteins are body fat. So if we implement a component analysis, they are the main components of many things, but the only difference is its density. So if we look from the perspective of component analysis, there is no such thing as ohol. Tofu consists of lipoproteins, soybeans also consist of lipoproteins. In simple terms, it's a view from the perspective of component analysis. But in Shimchon physiology, ohyol is a coagulated substance which blocks capillaries. Then it turns into substance with very rigid consistency and interrupts the normal blood flow. Do you understand the concept of this process? There are three types of ohyol which can block the blood vessels. Simple, fibrosis and gallstone consistency ohyol. What do I mean by this? There are different ingredients in blood. If in the blocked place there is a weak acidity, fat and proteins are coagulated. Middle acidity, coagulated ingredients are fat, protein, iron, calcium, what leads to the chemical reaction. And as a result, fibrosis consistency or hell is created. It's quite hard. But if these blood clots are oxidized with strong acid and blood changed its consistency into blood with strong acidity, lipoproteins melt during the process of oxidation. And after reaction with iron, calcium, collagen, they became rigid. This kind of ohyol is called gallstone consistency ohyol. So in this case, when we implement ohyol, it's very important how to conduct the process, right? If it's a simple consistency ohyol, if we poke a place with a hair needle and draw the blood, it will be extracted easily. If we poke a spot with a needle and draw the blood, but instead of blood we see white spots on the skin inside the cup, and only few drops of blood are extracted, or there is no blood extracted at all, it means that it's a fibrosis consistency ohyol, which already coagulated. But if the state passes and we try to extract blood, the spot there will swell and the skin around will be cold. The reason of it because the blood inside was coagulated and couldn't be extracted. Because I couldn't explain you the structure of body fat until now, I won't briefly explain you that if you try to extract blood for three months, it doesn't come out. If the blood acidity level increased and strong acidity level occurred, even if we don't poke that spot with needle and don't do vacuum pressure, we will see some kind of bubbles on the skin and the skin will fester. In this level of acidity, we can see that the blood, which are extracted from the capillaries, has very dark color. So, if you know these principles as soon as you do a few pokes with noodle, you will be able to understand what kind of acidity it is, weak, middle or strong. Because it will be easier to classify by having even one short look, right? If you go deeper in this topic, it will take a lot of time, so we can return to it later, when we will be discussing systematical principles. Because it will be hard for you to listen to the long explanations about logical principles. If we get inside it deeper, we will be able to notice that diseases occur as a result of weak acidity, middle acidity and strong acidity. Also, how our skin changes its color in the state of weak, middle and strong acidity. It will be completely different. If we look at someone's face, we will be able to notice the differences. 
Returning to the start point, our body is linked in food chain, blood system. If we talk about blood system, as I already mentioned, there is arteries, after them arterioles, and the last ones are capillaries. How do you think which one is the thinnest? Capillaries are the thinnest, right? So it means that if there are any waste, the first place where they can accumulate is capillaries, right? So, for example, arteries are blocked. So, in this situation, when have the capillaries been blocked? They have been blocked even before the arteries, right? But if we don't know about this theory, we can think that the only way to fix this is the surgery on arteries. If you read my book, you will see such paragraph which tells that there won't be any diseases, even if more than 50% of capillaries are blocked, there will not be any symptoms either. What is the reason? Our blood system is not a fixed system. If one capillary is blocked, blood can go through the other. If this one is also blocked, through the another. And this process can repeat continuously. In the state of high blood pressure, blood vessels expand, heart starts to push blood, and in such way the process is created. So how do you think at what rate the capillaries should be blocked in order some disease occurs? The structure of our body has such features. Only if more than 70% of capillaries is blocked, some disease can occur. So in order to block more than 70% of capillaries, we need a big amount of oil, right? If the amount of oil is small, blood vessels will not be able to get blocked. We should understand it in such way. If you look at the process of oil creation in our body, such big amount of oil can be created only as a result of heavy metal impact, bruises. Also, the environment state is very important in oil accumulation, so we should pay attention to it too. I think you could better understand it if you imagine it in your mind. If we add a little bit of coagulator to the soy milk, it will gradually coagulate, but if we add more, the process will proceed faster, right? If kidney function decreases, the numerical value of uric acid or weak acid will be high. If liver function decreases, the numerical value of middle acid will be high. Also, at that places where blood vessels are blocked, acidity level is quite high. Based on this principle, the higher acidity level, the faster the process of coagulation is. The same with the principle of creating tofu. And it's even hard to imagine how fast the process of oil creation can be. What about the degree of oil which can lead to death? Of course, there are differences between situations when blood vessels are blocked evenly inside the body and when blood vessels are blocked in one place. If we are talking about heart, it will stop in case when more than 80-90% of capillaries are blocked. So in order to block such amount of blood vessels, we need a huge amount of oil. So what situations can lead to this? If you think about it, high acidity level leads to death, and this process is related to the blood decomposition. This phenomenon occurs when the level of acidity is extremely high. The process of blood coagulation due to the high level acidity can be compared to the process of creating tofu. If we add vinegar or another coagulator to the milk, it will coagulate due to the oxidation process, right? I am talking about the fact that if acidity level increases, coagulation process speed also increases increases. If we talk about calories in food, more than 90% of them are calories of fat and protein. The other ingredients are included in a very small amount. That is why if acidity level increases, a huge amount of fat and protein coagulate. These clots are gradually accumulated inside capillaries, and this result at least to their blockage. Also it leads to the huge oil accumulation, a different level of acidity in the different parts of our body. Do you understand what I am trying to say? I wanted to clean it up. Also, such definition, the last organ of excretion and food chain. And in order to teach someone else, you need to realize its meaning. The last organ of excretion and food chain terminology is probably used only in Simchon physiology. 
This terminology, the last organ of excretion in food chain, is used when we look at our body as at a link in food chain. This is our view on human body. So if you read a book, you probably know that this terminology, link in food chain, is mentioned in there. If we look at changing process of some components in our body, what will happen if microorganisms absorb nutrients living in our small intestine, but microorganisms in our body consume only the nutrients which they need, right? If they consume nutrients which they need in order to survive, they will change components of their nutrients during the process of digestion. So these microorganisms who need similar nutrients are combined into one group and live together. So in case if they consume nutrients and activate digestion process, they will change the nutrient components again, right? So these nutrients changed due to the digestion process are food for the other microorganisms which are also combined in one group. This continuing process I call the food chain link, but what else does this terminology contain? If we eat food and then excrete waste, and then eat and excrete again, as a result, the process of acidification is activated. But there are such components remain at the end of the process of acidification, which can be consumed by any microorganisms. So what should we do with them? They have to be removed from the body, right? They are usually removed from it by kidney through the filtration process with urine. These wastes are called uric acid. Needle and strong acids are filtrated by liver and the product which is excreted as a result is bile. Bile is accumulated in our body like urine in the bladder. Its function is to detoxify food which as a result are removed from our body through the process of defecation with diadenum involved. Wastes which remain after food go through the filtration process in kidney and liver are removed from the body. What is the reason why they are called the last organs of excretion? Do you understand what I mean? So, the idea that kidney and liver are the last organs of excretion can be created if we look at our body like it's a link in the food chain. So, why the last organs of excretion are so important? What is the meaning of the kidney and liver malfunction? So, if the functions of these organs decrease, those wastes which have to be removed just remain and start to accumulate in the body, right? All those substances which could not be filtrated by these organs accumulate in the human body. That is why that substance which wasn't filtrated by kidney is called uric or weak acid and by liver is called tanning or middle acid. Do you understand? I told you about weak and middle acid, but how do we have to understand the principles of strong acid creation? I think that it's necessary to understand the definitions of weak, middle and strong acid. If we look at human body from the view of modern medicine, there are a huge amount of microorganisms inside our body, from 8 to 120 trillion. All of them are independent organisms. But the exact number is not that important. The important thing is just realization of their great number. And all of them are not the same, but belong to the different groups. So, because there are different microorganisms, there are also different nutrients needed to feed them. So that means that there are a huge amount of microorganisms exist. So it's hard to express it using words. And for this huge amount of microorganisms, a huge amount of nutrients needed. But microorganisms in our small intestine excrete waste or even nitrogen gas during the process of digestion. Nitrogen gas in the form of liquid is uric acid. But this uric acid, nitrogen gas, is removed through the pores. Respiratory system and also by kidney. Also, there are another blood vessels about which I will tell you later. There are a lot of different metabolism products which are removed from our body, but product which is excreted the most is urine. So the thing we need to clarify here is the definition of uric acid, and if it consists of one component or a few components, we need to clarify it before moving on. I want to ask you such question. Once I went to the charge and told such words, tried to ferment pigs and cows excrements. Will the smell be the same or it will be different? It definitely will be different. If you eat potato, sweet potato, pork, fish, and then fart, will smell be the same? Depending on the food eaten, the smell will be different, right? No doubts. In this case, this wasted gas is called nitrogen gas. If this nitrogen gas changes its form into liquid, will it have the same components or is it different? 
the right answer, it will have the other components in both cases. If we try to divide these components, it will be impossible. Generally, the substance which is excreted due to the process of absorbing nutrients inside the small intestine and digestion process is nitrogen gas in liquid form, which is called uric acid. If you ask me why we need this clarification, I can tell you that this uric acid is consists of different components, though that means that we cannot detoxify this acid using only one detoxifying component. I look at it in such way. So, did you understand the idea of creating and removing the uric acid? So, now we'll talk about tanning or medial acid. I usually define this acid as acid which gets inside human body from outside. It has different tastes such as sour, acrid, bitter and fishy taste. They are the tannin components. If these components get into the chemical reaction, Calcium is created. This acid is produced inside the plants. But if person consumes this tannin acid, he may taste for different tastes such as sour, acrid, bitter, and fishy taste. So why did plants create this acid inside their bodies? They made it in order to protect their body from insects or animals. So it's nothing but poison. So components which were created in such way are poisonous components. How did these plants create this poison? You are curious, right? To understand it, we need to get deeper inside. In simple terms, during the process of digestion, there are always waste products occur. If the calories of consumed food are high, the substance of incomplete burn will be the strong acid. If low calories food will be digested, substance which will appear is weak acid. The plants know this. We need to study more intensively in order to be able to create prescriptions. But for now, these explanations are enough. Our reaction is different when we are beaten by the snake and we are stung by the bee, but the poison is the same. In one case it has a purpose of anesthesia, in the other case liverproteins in our blood are coagulated that can interrupt the normal blood circulation, so the purpose of this poison is killing the opponent. Also, it's possible that oxygen deficiency can occur. If you inject nitrogen gas into blood, the oxygen deficiency cures, right? If there is no enough oxygen, the anesthetic effect can appear. But if we inject the weak acid, lipoproteins are coagulated, what can interrupt the normal blood flow, and as a result can lead to death. So in this way, plants are trying to hurt opponent. The acid which melt every other component is strong acid. It's so strong that it can melt everything, including blood vessels and nerves, like hydrochloric acid. But if you look at the process of creating such poison by plants or animals as a result during the digestion process of all nutrients, if you compare this process with the process of exhaust gas emission, this gas in this situation is nitrogen gas. During the process of combustion, the higher calories of food, the higher the level of acidity is, the lower calories, the lower level of acidity is. Also, even though it's the same nutrients, if we add a huge amount of oxygen, but the amount of nutrients is little, the gas in liquid form becomes strong acid. If there is a little amount of oxygen and a lot of nutrients, weak acid. If we look how plants, insects or animals use poison, talking about the purpose of using poison. Plants already know about it, so generally we call this poison with specific tastes, sour, acrid, bitter, fishy. Which plants use to defend their body, I call tanning acid, and it also can be called metal acid. So these ingredients get inside our body with food, and during the process of digestion they create wasted product. This product is called bile. So in the chemical reaction with tannin acid, calcium, the main material needed for bone formation, is created. Even if we don't eat calcium and eat only daily food, 
Nutrients of this food are creating the material for bone, skin, brain. We can compare this process with the process of cement creation. If we add gravel or river, its stiffness will be different. The same with all the microorganisms. If some components are changed due to the chemical reaction, these microorganisms already know about it. Now I told you about tannin acid and middle acid, okay? One more thing we need to think about is the chemical reaction. If the sour, acrid, bitter, and fishy for taste of tannin acid get involved in chemical reaction, calcium is created. You also need to keep in mind this fact. But for instance, if the functions of liver decrease, this tannin acid is accumulated inside the body, right? If it's accumulated inside the body, in places with low acidity level, lipoproteins will be calculated, and in places with high acidity level, iron, compounds of calcium, and calcium will be calculated too. In simple terms, this oil has fibrosis consistency and cannot be extracted. Talking about strong acid, when we make Macaulay, Korean rice wine, at the beginning, there is no alcohol in that liquid at all. During the process of fermentation, microorganisms consuming nutrients excrete incomplete combustion substance in liquid form. This liquid is alcohol, so we can tell that alcohol is created during the process of digestion of microorganisms. If there is no microorganism there, alcohol couldn't have been created. So these kinds of acid are created in such way. As you may see in my book, if there are functions of liver decrease, that means that functions of kidney decreased even before. In case if the functions of liver didn't decrease, and only kidney functions decreased, as complications, the function of liver will decrease too. So substances which couldn't be infiltrated by the liver start to get accumulated inside the body. What is the reason of it? Due to the malfunction of kidney is a number of components which cannot filtrate uric acid increases, the level of oxygen in blood decreases. Due to the oxygen deficiency, body cells can't consume and digest components they have to consume. And digest, as a result, all those components are accumulated, which can lead to the liver malfunction. In this case, tannin or middle acidity increases. If you understand everything I explained till this moment, including the process of creating Macaulay, everything should be clear for you. At the beginning of creating Macaulay, there is no alcohol there, but if we leave it for one week, because of the fermentation process, Macaulay is created. If we leave it for more than one week, it will turn into vinegar. If even longer, the process of decomposing will start. The level of acidity during the fermentation process of Macaulay is weak. Vinegar, middle, and decomposition, strong acidity level. Is it clear? Middle acid comes in from outside. If you try to explain it logically, if in the state of fig acidity, a fig is a function of kidney and liver, there is no reason for strong acid to be created. But unfortunately, according to the fixed idea of modern medicine, there is no idea using which we can fix our kidney or liver. There is no such method. If the functions of kidney and liver decreased and the treatment wasn't provided from the very beginning, the level of uric acid in the kidney and tannin acid in the liver will gradually increase, and if these values reach the peak, chemical reaction cures. In such way, in a state of strong acidity, calcium substance is created. This stage is entering into the process of decomposition of blood. In this stage, such diseases as cancer or leukemia can occur.
When I talk to the cancer patients, I usually tell them that the reason of their disease is decomposed blood. Fresh blood is a blood with a low acidity level, which is filtrated by kidney and liver. If we talk about rate of decomposition depending on the level of acidity, weak acidity level, weak blood decomposition, middle, middle decomposition, and the strong acidity, strong decomposition. Actually, sometimes you can sniff the smell of decomposed blood while you extract it. So if you clarify all we studied by now, incomplete combustion substance, nitrogen gas in liquid form. Is uric acid or weak acid? Middle acid is acid which gets inside human body from outside and produced by plants in order to defend their bodies from enemies. The organ in our body which can digest tannin acid is liver. If functions of liver decrease, the level of tannin acid increases. If the functions of kidney decrease, the level of uric acid increases. Kidney and liver are the last organs of excretion and food chain. This is very important. You realize it now, right? So the terminology of the last organs of excretion is applicable when we look at our body like at a link in food chain, but the modern medicine looks at our body as a car parts. If we look at our body as it's a link in the food chain, we can realize that if even one organ's functions decrease, its complications can lead to the malfunction of other organs. If the functions of kidney decrease, the level of uric acid increases. If this level increases, it can lead to the oxygen deficiency. So that means that the other diseases which are related to the oxygen deficiency can occur. The modern medicine can only provide you the emergency treatment. We can do such definition. All I explain you now is a view at human body from my perspective. If we talk about nervous system, as you probably know, it's a very important topic. That is why I am also very cautious when I talk about it. I have to be honest. What does it mean? I'm not the person who scientifically studied our body under the microscope. I studied that process when at the beginning it was only one microorganism, which then was divided into two, four, and so on until it became a very huge amount of microorganisms. Living with someone is better than living alone. Living in group is even better. So microorganisms, in order to survive, have to coexist. When I talk about our body, I ask myself how it was created and how it maintains life inside. In order to maintain life, what structure our body should have, doing research is related to it. I usually do some kind of conclusions and researches using meditation. So if you ask me about scientific aspects of the study, I don't know the answer. The Shimcheon physiology is a view from my perspective. If you read my books, you probably saw that it was written one or three times. If the functions of kidney decrease, with complications, the functions of liver will decrease too. So if the functions of these two organs decrease, oil is created, and depending on where it's accumulated, different diseases can occur. Cancer and leukemia also appear due to the malfunctions of kidney and liver. This is why we should be very careful with them. During this lecture, we mostly talked about kidney and liver. So what is the definition of kidney malfunction? It is very important to know, right? But actually, it's duty of scientists to expose this secret. But I also can tell you this. I can only tell you about it, but if you ask me about the results of autopsy, I cannot tell you anything. If we look at the content in my book, we can see that the kidney malfunction appears due to the lack of the blood, which goes through the kidney.
So I tell you this, and how do you think, what is the reason of such phenomenon when we experience a lack of blood going through the kidney? Is the problem right? If we talk about kidney malfunction, looking at it from the perspective of modern medicine, as at car parts, kidney filters uric acid, right? But because we look at human body is a link in the food chain and Chimchan physiology, glomerulus cells of kidney, eat and digest, and as a result, urine is excreted, and the substance which remains after the process of digestion is uric acid. So normally, about 220 cc of blood should go through the kidney in one minute, but in case of high uric acidity level, if the amount the blood is less than that standard, it means that the functions of kidney decreased less than 70 cc renal failure. So what is the reason of lack of blood going through the kidney? We need to clarify this problem. I explain it in such way. Do you know the ninth Shimchan blood point? I call this point Kanjilbyong or liver diseases point and explain like this. In our body, it is necessary to send impulses to nerves in order to make some movements. But if the layers of nerves are appealed, the impulses will go to the undesirable places or to the wrong places. In this case, some kind of unwanted movements can occur. So I can say that such unwanted movements are appear due to the melting of layers of nerves. When I talk about liver diseases, the mechanism of their occurrence is the same. Simply put, if the brain was damaged due to the cerebral hemorrhage, or stroke as a result half of the body or whole body gets paralyzed, and after a few time, arms and legs gradually become thinner. So in this state, how do you think blood vessels are blocked or not? They are blocked, right? There are such words in the book, approximately 5 to 7 cells in our body. Are combined in one group and connected to the brain with one nerve. All sorts of these cells are delivered to the brain, and there they are combined in one thought. And then the thought is delivered to the cells again through brain waves. If this exchanging process is proceeded well, the blood circulation will be smooth. But if this exchange is not proceeded, the speed of the blood flow is getting slower, and as a result, the amount of nutrients is also getting fewer, and the number of cells also gets fewer. That is why if person has stroke, his brain is damaged and the body is paralyzed, arms and legs are thin. The reason of it is a brainwave exchange process disorder, and as a result the weakening of blood flow, even though the kidney is located inside. What about one-fifth of the kidney cells? They are brain cells, right? And they are connected with nerves. Let's imagine our nerves as a telephone wires. If we peel the top layer of the telephone wire, can we deliver the information to the desired place? No, right? The same with our nerves. If I touch the nerves somewhere, in order to deliver impulse somewhere, is it possible only if our nerves have top layer, or is it also possible without it, even though nerves are thin? In order to prevent the leakage of impulses and deliver information to the desired place, we need this top layer. That is why I think that all nerves have layers. So according to our body structure, the only substance which can fill the layers is acid. It can melt the layer during the process of oxidation. Simply put, if a heart blocks blood vessels, the blood will not be able to circulate. And if the blood can circulate well, the level of acidity increases. If high level of acidity melts the nerves, what phenomenon can occur? So, for example, if there are 10 brain waves which were sent from the brain to kidney, only 4 or 5 of them can be delivered. So, the more weak brain waves become, the less amount of blood goes through the kidney. And this process leads to the kidney malfunction. So, if the nerves connect to the cerebellum with kidney, where is the place where the nerves layers were peeled off? How I told you is the 8th point called Shin Gan the point of kidney and liver. The first letter, Shin, 
is from the Korean name of kidney, Xinjiang, and Gan, liver. So together it's Xingan He. So if there is a hell accumulated in this spot, our blood can circulate well. If their blood doesn't circulate well, the level of acidity increases and if this increased acid melts the layer of nerves which connect brain and kidney, only 4 or 5 brain waves out of 10 can be delivered. And because of it, the less amount of blood goes through the kidney, what can lead to the kidney malfunction. Is it clear? But how do you think if the modern medicine scientists know if you have layers on your nerves or not? If you think whether they know that layers can be melted by acid, I actually don't know the answer too.